everybody. Welcome to Two Girls, One Pod. I'm Angie and I am recording on Gadigal land. I'm Evie. I'm recording on Wurundjeri land. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Mrs. Doubtfire is in the building. Children, ladies. Pop it. Now, before we get too silly. Yeah, don't get silly. I just to chat to you about that, um... The thing that just happened in South Korea, there was a crushing mm. um, during a Halloween um, street party kind of festival thing um, where it's, I think, estimated even over 150 people have died. Yep. And it's an awful, awful tragedy. There are a lot of crushings happen around the world and they are all really frightening because they don't happen in stampedes, Mm. like they don't happen fast. But you know what? It made me think of the time that I was in a crush and I think I've ever told you, Angie, about this. No. When it was 1988, bicentennial year, we went on the Manly Ferry because we lived in Manly and um, we went on the Manly Ferry over to Circular Quay and went to the Opera House. It was everything was outside. It was the most amazing night. I was 14 and it was, you know, it was a really big thing, the bicentennial Mm. um, in Australia. And everyone left at the same time to get on all the ferries to go back. And the thing is that, you know, you have to always wait for the Manly Ferry for the next one to come along. So you wait on the pier Mm. and there's all metal fences and metal um, gates. So they open up and they let you on. Well, everyone just kept pushing really slowly, really, really slowly. And we were starting to get a bit uncomfortable. Like when you're in it, after you've been in it, you understand how these things happen Mm. because you shuffle. You just do that little shuffling. And this is why it's so incredibly important that security is in place and that people really do understand the multitude of people and how a crush can happen and how slowly it happens. I remember looking at my auntie Chris because we looked down my grandmother who was only about five foot one. We looked down at her and she was like breathing like, like this. And I looked at her, I looked at my auntie Chris and I said, Nanny, you okay? And the fear in her eyes was really, I'd never seen that before. Mm. And Auntie Chris said, Mum, is this reminding you of the train to Auschwitz? And she said, yeah, it is. And then we heard this man say, everyone, we're getting f***ing crushed. Move back. There are children here. And you could hear the kids starting to cry. And then everyone did because he he was so loud about it that everyone out on the fairway, um, they started to move back a bit. People just helped each other out because there was nowhere to go. Mm. Like how do they kept coming in? We would have had kind of like that Liverpool um, football crush where, you know, you've got people up against – Fencing. Oh, God. Would have yeah, been a bit I know of that what you're happening. talking about. Anyway, it, it was a truly awful, awful feeling. I've never forgotten it. And you know, I've hardly ever spoken about it. But every time there's a crush that I think about that, I think about that one time that you don't even know how close you've come. But I remember how frightened my yeah. grandmother was mm. and how frightened we were because we, as short people, it's a really frightening thing. Mm, yeah. And thank God for that tall man who. He really projected his voice and I've ne- like he was just like a, a principal at school and we were all in trouble. And thank God for him because um, it, w- it turned out fine. But it can happen anywhere, anytime, any country. Yeah. People think that it's a, you know, massive people yeah. in a poorer country kind of thing. Oh, they can't afford, they don't understand, you know, how security – no, could happen in – one of the richest countries in the world. Hearts go out to everyone that was involved and all the families who've lost their loved ones in such a senseless tragedy. Australians concerned about the welfare of loved ones can call the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Trade Consular Emergency Centre. We'll pop the information in our show notes. There's a number there. There's two numbers, actually. Um, So, yeah, feel free to go there and give that a call if you're worried about anybody or anything. 
So it's a continuation of our Halloween week and celebration of Halloween because why not? We want to keep the scurry stories alive. And uh, recently, as some of you may or may not know, I was in a horror film, an Australian horror film called The Possessed, <laughs> starring myself, starring Jean Jarrett, who was a very big actor in the horror Australian horror realm. You might remember him from Wolf Creek and things of that nature. Uh, you know, we listed a bunch of actors that were in it the other week. But um, during that, this is actually based on a true story. Um, it's Ooh. about a man named Jacob and he is an exorcist. He kind of stumbled upon it. He had his own demons himself and he started clearing people and he's actually from the Sunshine Coast where I'm from. And it's an amazing story and it scares the shit out of you when you realise it's real. So because we were dealing with entities every day on set and the the pilgrim, you know how John's like Jacob, John Jarrett, was, it's like, don't step in the whatever it is, because it's like a full spirit thing, right? So we were actually all not really allowed to step in there because wow. it's very much like if you believe in that, because Chris Sun is massive in horror, so he's very like, his house has horror in it, like big, scary, like dolls. and It's wild. Oh, so he's fully ask? in it. That particular set is really great. Like with the what? What did you call it? Pendula. Pentagram, Pen- maybe. Pentagram. Yeah. Pentagram. Don't step in the pentagram. That was a really great set. Like it looked really, really great. What was that? Was that a set or was that someone's house? No. So the inside of the house where we did the when Nancy's up in the air and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was actually a set built in a studio out right. in uh, like where the movies all get made in Gold Coast. Yep. And then the right. house was a house we rented for the outside yep. and filmed downstairs part uh, in, but the rest was all on a set, oh, which was wow. like fully built. It was amazing. It so, looked amazing. Yeah. The set and art department was like insane. I don't want to give away too much. So I won't tell one thing I was going to say because you need to watch the film and Chris will get cross, crisscross at me for saying. <laughs> we don't want cross Chris. No, he gets real cross. The real horror comes out. Um, there's something I experienced in it makeup wise that was full on and I had to sit in the makeup chair for hours, which caused me quite a lot of claustrophobia because it was like prosthetics all over me, right? But there was this one day and I told the main guys, um, Jacob, who it's about, his kind of, I guess, exorcist friend that does them as well. So he had to be on set if we ever took entities or spirits home with us, right? He would often do clearings after we left and when we'd come back in and it's all like, and they get out like holy water and shit. So I told him that I started to have sleep paralysis and I'd feel this man sitting on my chest and he'd chant and he's like, you've taken something home. And it was really scary and I couldn't breathe. I got really sick. I missed a day on set because I was super sick, like my, like everything had swollen up. And he took me up to this room and I had to get like a mini exorcism. And he was like, yeah, you've got a really negative entity you've taken home from set because you've been messing with all these different like spirits and, you know, like Akamana and things like that. And have you been getting anxiety? And I was like, yeah, really bad. And I can't sleep. And I hear this man chanting. My eyes are open, but I can't see him. And he pushes on my chest. So I got like a mini clearing. And he was like... (laughs) And he like got it out of me. And I don't know if I felt better, but it's interesting because they fully believe in that stuff. And I think I felt better. Maybe it's like I conned myself into it, but it worked. I forgot all about that, you know. (laughs) Until I watched the movie again. I was like, wow, that was hectic that I had to do that. A couple of the other actors had to do it too. <laughs> Why are you so upset about this? I don't like it. Yeah. it's. Da- I don't like it at all. It's dangerous. You know what I want to know more than anything? What? If you don't believe in God, yeah. would that happen to you? Because you know how they have to use holy water? I don't know. They have their own things uh, that they believe. They believe there's no such thing to as anxiety. You've just got a demonic spirit attached to you and it's like somebody from the past that is telling you, you're anxious, you're anxious, you're not good enough. Do you believe that? No, I just believe in anxiety. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad. But um, 
But, like, if they believe in it, to each their own, right, and they clear that, it's they say it's not you, a negative spirit has attached themselves to you telling you you're not good enough, you're actually, you know, your higher self knows you're good enough, the negative energy or the devil, parts of the devil have a, attached themselves to you. The devil? Yeah, parts, like so the that's devil's what friend. I, that's what I'm thinking. I really, I need to ask someone, if anyone is listening and has an actual answer to this particular question, if you don't believe in God, you can't can't believe in the devil, clearly, right? Because the devil is a part of God. Can you be possessed? I think anybody like, can be possessed. Most of the people in the film don't believe in God um, and neg- negative things attach so, themselves yeah, the, to them. Yeah, but can positive things do it as well? Can they, can they um, positive things attach themselves to you? Yeah. They would be angels, wouldn't they? Yeah, and I believe in that, like higher power and stuff. Oh, you believe in all of it. I'm talking about people who don't. don't so know. that's why I just want to put that out there for anyone listening to us if they actually, um, you know, there might be people who are right into this kind of thing and know, oh, definitely, definitely. I want to know we if should you ask, don't. We could get Charlie XX on the show who's Jacob. We oh, that would be him. really good he, if we could. He would love that. He knows so much about this shit. It's super freaky. I would I would really like to do that if we could. Yeah. That would be fantastic. I'll contact Chris and see if I can get Charlie XX's, XS, I can't remember the name, the number, and see if he'll come on and talk about that sort of stuff and see who it, like, attaches itself to. We should have done it for Halloween week. Damn it. He, yeah, damn it, that we didn't think of this. Do you think that I would have anything happen to me if I was just talking to him? No, I think it's what you believe in too. You kind of attract and become. I think negative energies and entities can happen to anybody, but you could see it as whatever you want to see it. It could be depression. It could be, I don't know, a compulsion of drinking or eating. You could see it as what it is, a mental health condition, or you could see it as a negative energy. It depends how you want to view it. I think it's like one of those things, right? Was there anyone in your cast that was an absolute non-believer in this kind of thing and they were just in the movie because it was a job? I pretty. I think a lot of us were like that. Really? Yeah. I mean, you believed it because you were around it so much, and it helped with the character. Um, yeah. By the end, I believed it because I was like in it every single day for six weeks. So I became that world. But then when I left, it didn't like haunt me or anything like that. Not that I yeah, think. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm very. I'm very intrigued. And can I just say, I've already said it, that you were absolutely fantastic in the film. You were so natural. You were such a great actress. That, you know, if this, if this is just your first foray into acting, I think that you could totally become an actor. Like, you're very, very natural. Aww. And that's what acting, you know, is, that's what makes a good actor, isn't it? Thanks, so, girl. Um, that means a lot yeah, coming from you. I didn't expect you to be good. And you were great. <laughs> Why not? Why did you not think I was going to be good? Because we've done little bits before, like little, you know, bits and things, and you haven't been great. Oh, I didn't know I had to, like when I read lines for you. No, God, no. God, no one's good at that. No, just little bits when we've done social media and stuff like that. Um, uh, I don't but know. when you're on your own, you do your own little social media. You've got really good comic timing and stuff like that. Um, so I just didn't expect you at, to be a good serious actor because yeah. I've only ever seen you do comedy, which is great. Yeah. And if I've seen you do anything um, non-comedy, it's kind of been a bit... Mm, How's your father? How's your father? <laughs> But you were really, really good. And I think that it's something that you should pursue if you're um, interested in it because I think you'd be really successful. Ah, I feel like I'm too old. F*** off. What a dumb thing to say. I don't they pick like, isn't it like modelling? You've got to start when you're like 12. (laughs) No, no, no. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Look, I'm not dead yet. I could if I wanted to. See if if anybody Mm. wants to give this, you know, little awkward... Horror gal, another red hot go yeah, in there. She can not. She can sometimes play not awkward too. I know. So, How but good. um, I think that yeah, don't ever say you're too old for anything. No, that I'm is become a that pilot. is a capitalist patriarchal bullshit. Yeah, that's that true. You don't ever buy into that. You you're never me. too old for anything. I'm gonna win um, an actor. No, not an actor. What's the awards for acting? Actor. Yeah, I'm gonna win an actor. Or Logi. Look. Best newcomer. Never say never, sister. Sister Fox, never say never. What's things that scourge you when you were a kid? You know, stuff that really just like stayed with you. It happened like one time and you've always held on to it. Do you have one? I've got 
I've got multiple, but the two that I'll tell you about, one was there was a Pink Floyd video clip. Oh, God. In the 70s of Not Another Brick in the Wall, the song. Um, all in all, you're just uh, another brick in, in the, the wall. wall. Yeah, dun, that song. Dun, dun. Well, look up that video clip. It's animated and I saw it and thought it was an animate, like a cartoon for kids and it wasn't. It's not. It, there was, because w- the whole song is all about like just being uniformed and just listening to your government and not, you know, having any individuality, which I know now at the time, all I saw was all these nails, I'm uh, sorry, hammers walking all one in a the line. They looked like, you know, something from a Chinese military and all of these children being picked up by this scary character being picked up with his big long fingers and put into a meat mincer. <laughs> you know those hand cranking meat yeah, mincers? Oh my gross. god. It's still to this day absolutely frightened the life I out of me. Se- I know the song, but I don't think I've seen we'll look it the up. the um the film clip. We'll put it in our Instagram that particular part of the song. I'll, I'll find it and I'll pop it oh, up no. on my Instagram. Um, and the other one was there was this movie in the 70s. My mother, I can't believe my mother used to let me watch this shit. But it was called um, When a Stranger Calls. When a Stranger Calls. And it's about a babysitter who's babysitting kids. So oh, the, the remake is pretty much similar to the um, original one, but the original one's way better. And there's a babysitter and the parents go out and she is oh. keeps getting phone calls saying, have you checked on the children? Oh, it was like Scream. It's kind of like that. And but, then, I like, mean, that's where Scream. Movie. Yeah, but this was – the original was in the 70s and oh. that's the one I watched. And she kept going, is that like the beginning? She would say, oh, is that you, Mr. Anderson? And he'd be like, have you checked on the children? And she'd be oh. like, oh, my God. So she called 911 and they were like, you need to keep the caller on the line for longer than 30 seconds because we can't trace the phone call until you've done that. And every time she'd get to about 28 seconds, they'd be, you'd see all the cops like, you know, with their headphones on and like everyone in their dispatch or wherever they were and they're like, oh, man, because he'd hang up just as she'd get to 29 seconds. Oh. And then he'd call and she – I remember going upstairs and the kids at one point had lollipops in their mouth while they were asleep. Like it was such – it was a jump scare kind of movie, like just a creep jump scare kind of like oh my god like that well the very last scene in it that I remember I don't know remember anything after this and this is a huge spoiler alert I don't even care because I've got to tell you I've got to share this fright fear that I had happened to me as a child she finally keeps him on the line for more than 30 seconds and they're like you can see them in the dispatch going oh my god yeah we got him we got him oh what's the address what's the address (gasps) the music is really loud all of a sudden oh my god this like this the camera is going down and then they call her back and they're like Amy He's calling from inside the house. Get out of the house. Get out of the house. And oh my God, I've got goosebumps right now. And she's so screaming. And someone comes through the saloon doors from the kitchen into the lounge room. It's all, oh my God, me and my mum was screaming at her. <laughs> <laughs> I think he killed her. I don't know what happened. I don't even know. But he was calling from inside the house the whole time. How old were you when you watched this? Four. No, it's about seven. Oh, why did your mother let you watch that? Exactly. Exactly. Susan Beryl, what is wrong with you? <gasps> no wonder your daughter's a heart cocked. Oh, exactly. Thank you. Now everyone knows why I'm a mess. The trauma. She I just, just really didn't t- protect your peace by any means. <sighs> God, I tell you what, growing up in the 80s, 70s and 80s, we, no one cared about children. No, no. Children were left to their own devices. You could play with the knives. You bloody played on the streets with no shoes and clothes on. Oh, she needs a moment. While she's having a moment, I'll share mine because this may take a while. I was beside myself with this. Do you remember the sixth sense? (gasps) I was never allowed to watch scary movies because I don't know if it was because my mum was scared of them or just like 
like Catholic things, like you don't really mess with like the devil or like ghosts and oh, shit. Yeah, that's a big one. A too. Big one. And we, I had a sleepover at a friend's house, and mm. their mum had the six. My mum was like, I was like, we might be watching the Sixth Sense. My mum looked it up or whatever at the DVD store because obviously back then. That's all we got. And she was like, you're not allowed to watch it, otherwise you're not going to the friend's sleepover. I promise I won't watch it, I won't watch it. Anyway, the mum had it on. So we walked down. I know. (laughs) (laughs) So we walked down and I only saw a tiny bit of it, right, just the tiny bit where he says, I see dead people. (gasps) Oh, no, it was the bit when he was, he's in the school. School. school, And, oh, my God, that stuck with me. And I could not watch that movie until I was a fully-fledged adult. And I thought from there, and my mum, I had to come back home. Like I had, I, I couldn't sleep there. Like I was beside mm. myself. And my mum was told like, you, didn't she? you were not supposed to watch that because I knew you would do this and I couldn't sleep. Mm. And I couldn't, and I would think about it and I started to think I could see dead people. I was beside myself. I was a bag of nerves. I finally watched that movie and it still fucked with me even as an adult. I just it really. It's such a great movie. It's such a good movie and you don't see it so well coming. Done. No, you don't know that twist until you know that oh, twist. Oh, and it's <gasps> really stayed with me. But now I love horror because I had to watch a lot during the two week yeah. lockdown before I crossed to go back to film The Possessed. I would watch in the hotel quarantine every night and day back to back horror to get into the, the zone. Did you watch um, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original? No, I didn't watch that mm, one. See, a, I watched more I know, new ones. Yeah. Like yeah, Hereditary that, and Summer. Yeah. Yeah. Great movies. Oh, great movies. So, was summer. You know, that story that you just oh, told, I, I have it. a similar with Nightmare on Elm Street. I saw that with a group of teenagers I was 14 and 13 I think and they were all 14 my brother's friends and I got through the first killing and that was it for me no. um, it, it, it was pretty much it for everyone people were leave, like kids were running out of the room yeah. after each kill like trying to stay as long as they could through this movie movie and they couldn't do it and I was one of the first to go but I never because the first killing um Freddy Krueger slashes her She's in a nighty in bed and he slashes her belly mm. open. And I swear to God, I could not sleep on my back for the next four years. And I ended up with a back problem from sleeping <laughs> wrong on my front Kids because I was so watch. scared that he was going to come yeah. and slash my belly open. Kids just should not watch scary movies. I just don't think our little brains no. are We're not prepared. prepared and are mature enough to no, you know, take that shit in. But now that you're all adults, oh. I, I very much recommend you watch all the scary movies you want. But as you're, Including if you're a kid, the possessed. Yeah, get in there. F- get a dog up ya. <laughs> get an Australian horror up ya. Get a freaking well, don't Australian ya. horror up ya. Oh, look, please head to Apple Podcasts and rate and review the show. You can get in touch with us directly by email Mailing podcast at two girls at novaentertainment.com.au. And please don't forget to follow Nova Podcasts Official on Instagram for all the behind the scenes action. You can follow me and Angie. We have our own um, Instagrams and we also have one together because that's what we like. <laughs> we love you. We hope you've had a wonderful Halloween week. And, you know, remember it's all just tomato sauce. Yeah. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just have some fun. Eat all the chocolate you want. Yeah. Or don't. Whatever. I don't care. All I want to say is just have the day you deserve, mostly. Yep, me too. <laughs> and love each other. Yeah. Peace. Hold your loved ones a little bit closer. Just now. Do it now, right now. Go. Bye. Bye. Bye.